Hello everybody, LegBuddies here. Today I'm going to show you how to solve the Rubik's Clock. So the clock is a pretty interesting puzzle. It's unlike most of the twisty puzzles, but it's also pretty easy to solve, so I'm going to show you how to solve it today. But before we get started with that, I'm just going to explain like what each of the pins like do to all the different faces of the clocks and everything. And so basically, these four pieces are like complete pieces, like the clock faces are always connected. You see if this moves, this one will also always move. Uh, however, these pieces in the middle, they are uh, not connected. So you see if I move this one, the other one probably won't turn. Uh, so these are all independent pieces. These ones are all connected on two sides. And so let's say we have no pins up. Obviously, we're not going to do anything with that. And so we're going to put one pin up now. And so what that will do is it'll affect these four clocks right here, the four that are surrounding it. And because this one is double-sided, it's also going to affect this clock. But we don't really care about the back side, so yeah, it's just going to affect these four on the front. And when you have one pin up like this, you're never really going to turn the other ones, like where these three pins are down here. You don't want to turn these, it's just going to mess stuff up on the back side. And so when you have two pins up, you see these two, we turn on this side, these six will all move. So you see, a couple of them will move on the back again, but we don't really care about that. Just these six will move. When we have these three up, all of these eight will move. So basically everything except this last one. And then when we have all of them up, all of them will move. And so knowing that, we can now get started. I'm just going to scramble it up. Here we go. And here we go. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to get a cross on one side, like we would normally do on a normal cube, I guess. So just the cross of these clocks on one side. Then we're going to turn it around and do the cross on the other side. Uh, we don't have to orient it any specific way. They just have to all be connected to each other. And then we're going to, one at a time, get each of these corner pieces into place, move them all facing up, and then they'll all be solved. And so to start off with that first step, the first thing you're going to do is you're going to match up the middle clock with one of the surrounding four ones. And so I like to start with the top one, which means we have to move the bottom pin. And so what that will do is it'll move this one, but it won't move this one. You could also do this one, but not this one because this one would move this clock also. So I'm just going to start with this one, and I'm going to move it until it matches up with the top one because it's the one that I like to do first. So now these two are matched up. Now I can move that back down, and I'll put the one above it up. And what I'll do now is I'm going to match it up with this one to the side. So I'll match it up these two, then I'm going to match up these two. And so we move this one up, match it up, uh, looks like it's right, move that one back down, and now we want to move all these four at once, so we want to retain those. And so we'll move this one up, and now we're going to pair with this one. So you see here, move this pin up, and match it up. And now what we do is we move both these top pins up, so we can match it up with the last one. And since you already have these four pieces together, you have to move both of them up, so it'll move all six of these. Move it up to the top. And there we go, they're all lined up. Now what we do is we move up both of them, or just one of them, because all of these pieces that you've made will still turn with three of them. You see, they all still move. And then you're just going to line it up to the top. And you can also do all of them up like this, but really I just like doing it like this because it gives you an advantage on the next step, which is you turn it around, so you have all of these facing up, all the four pieces. And there we go. And now we do the same thing on the back side. And so you have this piece sticking up already because you only did three of them. And so we match up this middle piece with the top piece like we did before. There we go. Move that back down. Move this piece up. And then match these two pieces with this piece over here. There we go. And now we match th these three pieces with this piece. Hey, look, it's already matched up, so we don't have to do that. Move this pin up. And so now we match all of these pieces with this piece, move it around like that, and there we go, now we have both the crosses in place. And so at this point, this cross should be in place and they should all be facing up. It's important that they're all facing up like that. While these ones, they can be facing anyway. Anything will work. And so now what we want to do is we move three pins up, and what we're going to do is we're going to move this clock. We're going to move this clock to match all the rest of the clocks that we have already. And so we move all the pins up around it, except the one right next to it. And so we want to line this one up. We move these three up. And you see I already have that. And so now we line up. We just turn the ones with the pins until it lines up with this clock. 
you're not actually going to move this clock, you're going to move all the pieces around it to that clock. And there we go, we have it matched up with the whole cross. And now we can move this one back up and another one down. And now we're going to match up all the pieces that we already have with this one. See up to the top. There we go. We can move that one up because we have that one now. Move this one down. Uh, there we go. Match it up. And then this one, we would normally do this one, but it was already matched up. And now all we need to do is move all the pins up and move it up to the very top. And you'll see both sides will be solved. And the reason that the other side is already solved, even though we didn't match up the corners separately for this one, is because the corners, again, are two-sided. And so when you move one corner, uh, it moves on the other corner, and it just matches up at the end. Just make sure that when you finish the first cross, you make them all facing up, because otherwise these five pieces will be facing the wrong way. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty much it for this video. Uh, if you like this video, if it helped you at all, definitely leave a like down below. If you need any help with anything, uh, also leave a comment down below. I know there's not very many video guides out on this. Uh, there's quite a few good websites though. I'll link one of those in the description. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, leave some suggestions for other tutorials like this in the future. Stay subscribed to see those tutorials or any other videos in the future. Uh, so stay subscribed. See you guys next time. Bye!